This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. time to get geeky get awesome it is the awesome cast episode 496 i'm mike sorg at sorgatron on the twitter here in the sorgatron media studios in pittsburgh pa uh, officially still in yellow condition i believe i don't think that, i don't think that changes yet uh but anyways we're here we got a crew we got a whole crew here in true birdie bunch fashion and they're hiding there some of them are hiding from their cameras right now well with us first of all from uh, representing big bank international he's a tech guru over there he is john chichilla hey i was wondering which one of us you were talking about but yeah, <laughs> that's me i go by the, it's the usual order it's the usual order from his fancy fancy good looking camera over there look at that look at that 4k's Streaming at I, 720p. I threw somebody your way because they were they're looking for some uh, webcams. I'm like, well, Chilla looks fantastic every week, so go ask him what camera he's using. So, uh, since nobody can get Logitechs anymore, uh, so uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I actually had somebody uh, looking for something, and they needed a the, the kind of connector, black magic connector thing I recommended back in like December, and I was like, oh man, they're twice as much, and you can't find them now. Good luck. <laughs> so uh yeah it's it's a wild wild world right now everything's a little ridiculous trying to order anything oh, yeah. yeah i don't streaming under- related i don't understand why my tide pods are taking an extra week to get here but anyways <laughs> uh also with us also waiting on her deliveries is the dutters hello i was sneezing you were sneezing <laughs> ah okay that's why i ran away it's a rainy day on animal crossing is that how you're cooling yourself off on yes. this 90 degree pittsburgh weather Yes, and a root beer float from a wrestling cup. There you go. <laughs> Fantastic. How are you doing? How are you holding up? Good. Uh, chemo makes me sneeze. Mm. I, I, had, I have no idea, but on chemo day and the day after, I sneeze like crazy. It's amazing. It, just loosen, <laughs> it loosens, loosens uh, uh, stuff up at the molecular level, right? Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> no. Fantastic. Uh, also with us is the other guy from Big Bank International. Also, uh, who who he he got all of his deliveries today. It sounds like because uh, it sounds like a a, a certain fruit company is showering him with gifts, or at least through a a, a vendor or something. Uh, Ron Krauss is with us, sir. How you doing? I'm very good. How about yourself? He gets on. He's like, let me, here. Let me show you my new all my Apple devices I have over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i got two two new apple devices uh, uh the se and the um the latest uh, um pro uh, ipad pro fantastic and you figured out your chat room on there yeah i got it <laughs> it's good now fantastic uh and of course uh producer missy is uh, uh on the line as well uh to make sure we all stay straight we we, we have the, the we have the warden is here this week so don't worry about us going too far off the rails like last week guys uh <laughs> we i think we started the show that thing says we did that thing i did the, the intro yet? thing and now i need to tell you guys to please so go subscribe go check out rest or out at awesomecast.com uh follow us on twitter and facebook as well we go live every tuesday at 7 p.m eastern time live i didn't say we start the show at 7 p.m maybe we just hang out for a little bit and and look for the right dongle i don't know uh but we are live on uh, facebook lives where most of the people are going to uh come hang out with us but if you have a uh personal issue with uh using facebook's uh we are over on the twitter periscope the youtube and the twitch so you can pick your billionaire uh so and also please uh, of course follow that page on facebook and a lot of uh, discussion does happen on, on the facebook 
group. So please roll over there and uh, be a part of that. We have a lot of people um, um, commenting on stories we put in there through the week and submitting ones for us to talk about here on the show, which we'll get to here in a little bit. Hopefully, if I get through my intro. Uh, also, thank you to our audio partners, the405media.com and our friends at Post Industrial Audio at postindustrial.com, sharing great Pittsburgh podcasting with the world. And uh, also, uh, if you, you know, please subscribe to us if you're catching us on your po- favorite podcatcher or if you're, you're, you're listening to us now, later, or live on Facebook or wherever, please hit the like button, heart button, share button, get us in front of more people and uh, help this Tuesday night awesome party grow. Also, thank you to our supporters at patreon.com slash awesomecast, our good friends at the coffee club level, Matt Weller, John DeGore, and John Carmen, and our friends at the fan of the show level, Michael Fedor, pghmuseums.org, and I need a bell for a new person. I need a I need like a new a new Patreon bell or something. Has anybody got a bell out there in in Google Meet World? <laughs> um we have an app for that. Uh, uh Dave Potter has joined the Patreons. Uh, I, I apologize. I, I, I found it in the Patreon after last week's show, so I didn't get a chance to say anything. Uh, but thank you, Dave Potter of the Tiny Shutter Podcast, uh, Prof Pod on the Twitter, for joining us as well. Also, great contributor to our uh, uh, stories from the uh, Awesome Cast group as well. So thank you, everybody. You guys support the show, too, at patreon.com slash awesomecast. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. I'm, I'm smiling as I'm going through. Uh, I, I want to go through. I want to touch on this because I saw the new episode come up, but I did not watch the latest Mandalorian uh, behind the scenes. Katie, oh, it's so good. it's the best. It's called Technology, so it's episode four. It's Technology, and it's it's about the set that they're working on, awesome. and it's it's a combination. So most of the scenes you see them in are it's giant LEDs, like just a giant. It's a it's a ceiling to the floor. I mean, floor massive, and then they they're in front of these scenes. And the problem with a lot of like the the way way you do this in green screen and stuff is things look weird. The shadows are added in post production. So a lot of so they created this this area that they're calling. Oh, I just blinked out on what it was called. Um, I'll find it in a second. But um, they the problem is like a lot of the shadows and things. So they're using these LED panels to create the shadows, and they're using VR technology and gaming engines to put this all together to mm-hmm. create this oh my gosh ah, i can't remember what the thing is called my brain just went but um it's it's amazing it's it's honestly i think the best i mean i i've enjoyed the episodes but didn't geek out until this particular episode where it's it he took john favreau took the things they learned from vr with the lion king mm. and shooting with you know live action and with elf and iron man and it's it just jungle book and he just took all this thing to like and this is just going to propel the industry forward because everything he's using and he even talks about everything he's using is accessible to everyone and it's not some like super fi- high end it's just the way that they're combining i mean it's high end but it's not like something that you can't get your hands on it's just combining all these technologies together and it's just phenomenal and it's like i said it's called the volume the the stage they call it the volume Mm -hmm. and it's just you have to watch it if you are any interest in in tech or gaming even if you don't you know i haven't watched the mandalorian you'll definitely appreciate it so so you mentioned like stuff that ever like okay building this these giant screens yeah that's gonna be costly but it's running on the unreal engine which uh anybody can go download we talked about the epic games uh uh, app before the show and the civil the new civilization six is on there for free you can download the unreal engine and start making basically the same stuff that could be used on this set um and so cool also referred to as stagecraft i believe as well so it's, yeah yeah it, it's cool it, it, and, and and even just seeing like how much they build practically to mix with that stuff in the background and i didn't even think about the shadow thing until you mentioned it too yeah so, because yeah. you the, the, the main character his head is a mirror almost mm-hmm. So you can't really go in later, but now they're able to put the sun here, which is going to make the natural shadows. And it's just, it's like I said, it's just phenomenal. One of the earlier episodes, I think probably the director one, I'm switching the wrong thing. Uh, it, it, there was actually like something where he's in the cockpit and there's like, you know, guns blazing, you know, from the other, the other, um, you know, uh, uh, crafts or something. And, and they were geeking out because they saw the laser reflected in his helmet as it went by. So that was like yeah. another thing that you just normally wouldn't get 
Um, and just that little detail that it immerses more. I, it's, it's, I love, I, I, every time I, they, they tell me more and more about the stage, I'm impressed. I was like, oh, oh yeah. It's, so, oh, you're going to, you're absolutely going to love this. You're going to lose it. Sounds it. Like you're this, gonna, I can't wait till you see it. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to have to get caught up with that then. All right. Uh, Kraus, what is your awesome thing? Well, since this is, you know, binge season um, forever until we, you know, get to go back outside, uh, my wife and I just finished Turn. It's Washington Spies. It's basically about George Washington's spy ring. Um, mm. It was uh, four seasons, you know, great show. It's one of those ones that had a beginning, a middle, and an end, which I always like, you know, nothing worse than that you start binging a show and then find out, oh, God, they never finished it or something like that. So this is actually complete. Um, but it was very good. If you have any interest in that period of time, I would highly recommend it. I'm having a problem because we were just talking about it a little bit beforehand. Um, uh, I every time I watch a period piece that also happened to happen in Assassin's Creed, I just mush the two together in my head. Right. <laughs> That's all. Awesome. So now yeah. I'm going to be all Assassin's Creed three, and and yeah, yeah, this is going to be rough. <laughs> so so it's called Turn Washington Spies, huh? So is that a yeah. Netflix original? Did it originate somewhere else? No, it. I think it originated on AMC. If I was, if I'm correct. Okay, awesome. But it was but like it's one of those things. I guess they purchased. You know, they bought the rights to be able to show it or whatever. Mm. It's but it's a very good show. Like I said, four seasons. Um, I think it took us a couple weeks to you know to get through, and but it was very good. It looks like it started in 2014. So. Yeah. Awesome. So that's been out for a little bit. So that that's nice. That's nice. Well, AMC, AMC have a weird staggered season thing, or maybe, maybe I'm just thinking HBO, where you gotta wait like two years in between Game of Thrones or Westworld or something. They well, never... AMC does do that whole they take breaks. Mm-hmm. You know, like The Walking Dead will go for a while, and then they'll take a, a break like at Christmas time, and then they come back and finish the season. So. They do sometimes get weird like that, but like I said, this was a very good show. Awesome. We enjoyed it. Um, so, so my awesome thing is Pac Man. That it, so it's 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 a couple of things kind of, but I I I can see this trend coming of uh, uh, Pac Man fever. I think Krause, you were asking why the Pac Man. It's the 40th anniversary of Pac Man. It seems so. Everybody's. I, I'm waiting. I'm. I'm well, Google will probably re-release all those uh, Google Maps that they did uh, with Pac Man, right? Probably because what that was probably the 35th uh, anniversary where they did that, maybe 30th as well. Um, but there's some more, some new and inventive ways it looks like Pac Man's getting um, worked in here. So, Nvidia, uh, we talked about GANs previously. Those are things, remember when they remember the old, was it, was it, is this a cat.com that we used to see? That was all the computer generated pictures and, uh, and, and things like that. And sometimes it, it was really freaky and didn't really work out. Yeah. <laughs> so NVIDIA's AI GAN machines, um, they recreated Pac-Man from scratch just by watching it being played. So they have mostly re- uh, recreated the functionality and the maps from the sounds of things um, for it. And uh, let's see, this is a... So this, this is actually a picture of the AI-generated Pac-Man. And if you look at it, if you're able to look at it closely in the article, it actually... It's pixelated, and they say it's because it's the AI generated one. It has more or less created, more or less, in in and maybe the Christmas is the less. Uh, so that has been uh, created from Nvidia's uh, Toronto Research Lab. Uh, I believe they are also going to be releasing this for you to play. Uh, let's see, and here, actually, there's a video that goes with this too. Um, for the NVIDIA um, recreated. Yep, there it is. It, it's it's not entirely full framed. It's a little it's a little choppy, I guess. But the fact that it was kind of recreated by um, AI generation. And the other thing to go with it as well is uh, Twitch is apparently going to do um, Twitch multi- uh, multiplayer Pac-Man games directly in Twitch. So that means you're going to go to a website on Twitch, in Twitch, and be able to play like the multiplayer editions of Pac-Man over there for free. And it says it's an MMO that's, in a way. Oh, that's no. a lot of Twitch. Oh, that's a different game they're doing. That's a, Yeah, that's a lot of Twitch. That's a lot of Pac-Man <laughs> Twitch. So now you're going to see, like, why is there so much Pac-Man? There's a maze creator on there. 
Mm-hmm. Um, this is all going to be part of it. Yeah, Pac-Man Live Studio is what we're looking at. Um, it's part of the Amazon Games. Uh, there's actually a website for it now, and it is actually going to be released uh, soon in the 40th anniversary. I don't think I saw a date officially for this, but it just says coming soon to Twitch. So so keep an eye out for that. Um, I, I like that. So So not the biggest Amazon Games thing. I guess it makes people see the logo at this point, which, by the way, is just the games with the Amazon smile face, I noticed. <laughs> so they're being well, Amazon seems to be trying to really do more with their actual games unit. I've seen a couple an, um, advertisements in the masthead of, like, when, when I actually go to Amazon.com to buy something, I'm starting to get, as much game advertising as I am getting, mm-hmm. hey, come watch IMDb TV and whatever else out of Amazon Prime. Oh, they're definitely they're definitely ramping it up at this point because they, they just released Crucible, which is their big MMO, I think a free to play MMO, um, and it, it, it they're finally getting product. They started the game studio several years ago, and that's starting to turn into something. Like I think the game plan's fr- kind of finally come into the forefront right so we'll see what happens when they put all that um strength behind it speaking of pac-man there's a little bit of crossover because it sounds like minecraft is doing something with pac-man but that is not your awesome thing of the week chilla that's that's not my awesome thing of the week but i did actually it was funny because uh christopher asked me over the week and he's like can i use one of my apple gift cards i'm like for what he's like i want the pac-man mods for for minecraft so there's a there's skins and levels and three it's kind of like a 3d run through of pac-man so instead of being the top-down experience you're kind of running through the gauntlet with the the ghosts and everything there are the 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 pellets and what did they call the power is it a power pellet the one that lets them turns the ghost blue so yeah like all that's built in um it was a little bit complex for for him at five to be able to to handle but um, it was it was an interesting foray into the the Minecraft Pac-Man blended universe. So I'm looking at so it's a completely 3D version. You're oh wow, you're a little. It's the version of oh wait, you, you, you have the you can be the Pac-Man with the arms and the legs, or you're you're a giant it, blocky Pac-Man head. Yeah, they have a couple different. There's one with the isn't there one with glasses or like a monocle or something? I ha I, I'm not familiar with that one. Is there a baby Pac-Man? A Miss Pac-Man, maybe? Uh, this looks like Pac-Man offices. <laughs> oh, it's just like an open world version. Okay. That's fun. Wow, that's that's cool. Uh, so, so how much... And there's your uh, green... Was that Minecraft zombie version of the ghost, I guess? Mm-hmm. So that's, it was uh, $7.99. $7? That might be worth it. I only have Minecraft because of... Uh, uh, game pass but that might be a worthy seven bucks to drop on something like that for for 3d pac-man so since since our since our pac-man parties we talked about months ago won't be going anywhere with the pandemic uh so um you, you imagine having to sterilize the maze that'd be a problem <laughs> but anyways but that's not your awesome thing that's not my awesome thing awesome thing of the week but it is minecraft related so minecraft dungeons was released this morning at 4 a.m um, it was released for PlayStation, Xbox, um, Windows, Nintendo Switch. You'll get it as part of Game Pass. Mm-hmm. Um, right. If you were a fan, and I actually watched a couple of videos as I was trying to determine if I wanted to buy it. Um, I watched a couple uh, video streams on Mixer and on Twitch, honestly, um, over the weekend. And I did then pre-order quickly. Um, if you are a fan of... A little bit of Zelda, but more on the um, Diablo mm-hmm. uh, realm. Like it's it's a it's a dungeon crawler, definitely all ages dungeon crawler. But it looks pretty cool the way it works, and they're they're kind of promising. You know, you can get to a finish. You, there will get to a point where you finish the game. To be un, unlike, I mean, I guess Minecraft when you defeat the Ender Dragon, but you can get to the end and you can kind of start over and it's a, and it can, you can make it a whole different experience. So it does have replay value. Um, it does do multiplayer up to, I think four players. I was more worried about it, at least as long as I can get two on the same screen, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it looks like a pretty cool game. I haven't gotten to play it yet. I've only seen live 
game footage. Um, but I did watch a bunch of live game footage and it's, they must have released final versions to some special people because there were a lot of videos out there that had full gameplay and wasn't just a beta. Mm-hmm. Um, so it looks, look, looks like it's going to be pretty exciting. I'm hoping to put some, put some definite time in there. I hope they come out with an iOS version. Um, but for now I'll be playing probably on the Xbox. Um, and when they have cross play, I'll probably pick it up for the switch. Hopefully they'll have a sale. Actually, um, I just read an article tonight that, um, cross play is enabled for Xbox and, uh, switch. So, Oh, really? Yeah, okay. nice. so I I saw it. I think it was on um, Android Central. I yeah, they said it, it was going to be coming. Um, I guess they got it done, knowing that the game was delayed. Maybe they got it done um, with the delay that was imposed. Because I think this was supposed to release in April, or at the very beginning of May, and they delayed it till um, May, whatever today is, twenty seventh, twenty eighth, twenty sixth. Help me out here, twenty sixth. Um, so yeah, th- then I will probably pick it up on both systems just so, so if I can cross play and I can cross save, then I'm good to go. So, so you do have a word of warning on this apparently and uh, it, damn it. I oh, think yes. I, I think just I, do whatever you do, if, if you had downloaded it and installed it and your rev is before, uh, what's the bootstrap version 166. If you're not at 166 bootstrap or higher on dungeons, do not uninstall or it will wipe your SSD drive or your, in, well, whatever drive it's installed on. Um, so there was a bug found. This is on the PC, um, not, the, not the Xbox. Yeah, it was on the PC. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it deleting everything on your Switch. That would be uh, kind of fun. Well, uh, I, I think I did pre-install it on my laptop, on my Asus yeah, laptop. Yeah, so make sure you go and, and update it oh, immediately. Oh, no. <laughs> um. Otherwise, when you if you uninstall it from add remove programs, it tends to wipe the drive. What the hell? <laughs> what? what? It's not. It, it sounded it, from the way for, and and I I just noticed this article after I, I, I had joined the show, so I was looking for other content to to put in links for pictures and video and whatnot. But um, I found I stumbled upon this, so it looks like it. In, instead of putting the directory that the your game's in, it's like doing a dot dot slash dot dot slash. So it's going up to the root of the drive. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> to do its delete. Oh no! That's it's a, it says it's an SSD glitch for the most part. So I think I'm safe. Well, I'm sure that's because otherwise it would take a lot much longer time. I don't know. This, <laughs> the person was saying that they had they had a different drive mm-hmm. um, for where all their games were installed. Um, and it wiped, it deleted everything from the drive. You had to walk by, I think, because you were talking about Minecraft down there. You had to sneak up. <laughs> oh, I had to sneak up. <laughs> um, well, it related to that. Hey, Chachi's over on on the watch party over on my apparently on my page over there. Uh, he's in his 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 world with Ronnie. Um, and uh, I don't know if Ronnie heard us talking about him. Uh, but he 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 reminds us. Speaking of the Pac Man we were talking about before, the uh, world's largest Pac Man dot com is still going strong and i remember talking about this years ago uh so <laughs> wait 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 wait. what is this in the corner made for internet explorer <laughs> so that should tell you how old it is but it's just a giant uh, a just multiple interlinked pac-man uh um mazes so pretty crazy project that's still going. Hey, you know what's also pretty crazy and awesome? Our good friends at Slice on Broadway uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for the majority of our coming up on 10 years. I think officially next week is our 10 years of the awesome cast. But uh, we are actually we put a marker in for the 500th episode. So please look out for that. Um, we're going to figure out what we can do. Social distancing. I was going to try to do a party. But that's not going to happen now. Uh, so, uh, but anyways, go check out our friends at Slice on Broadway, Beachview, Carnegie, East End, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, whenever they play again. Uh, so, uh, uh, so please go check out. Thanks to everybody for supporting our good friends there down the street here in Beachview at the original OG location for Slice on Broadway. Uh, and thanks for supporting the show. Speaking of the Chachi that was in the chat room, um he's got the the uh the gamejourney.com still going but he's also still 
he he's, he had a reminder in the chat to help put uh put a pickle on it over 100 subscribers so he's been going strong i believe this is week three of pickling is that the proper term for what he's doing? Pickling things? I want to say, because I mean, if you're not, pickling things, aren't you putting them in a jar with some yeah, vinegar and pick, spices? He's pick, he's applying pickles to things. <laughs> he's cracking the pickle jar open. Yeah, yeah. He's cracking that. He's putting pickles on things so you don't have to. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> go, so Can I just say his facial expressions are awesome. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know. Before he even opens his mouth, whether he likes it or not, I'm just saying that right. <laughs> he's just like, I know how this is gonna go. Uh, yeah. So he's, uh, last week was candy week. I know. Uh, <laughs> was that a muffin? <laughs> I need to catch up. I'm behind. Uh, but go check it out. Put a pickle on it. Uh, it's uh, it's his it's his his project, and it's it's going. He's he's building it. He's improving. He's gonna have a full. He's gonna have his own full in house studio. By the time you know this thing gets to 100 subscribers, uh, that he's he's starting to put a pickle on an empire from. So, so I wouldn't be surprised. That's that's probably going to happen. Uh, what camera is he using? Um, I don't know, but I know he has to replace it because of reasons. <laughs> so, um, you know, I don't know. Hopefully, he'll reach out to you so you guys can camera chat. Hit, hit up in the chat room. Um. Anyways, so what are we doing here? Um, Riz Riz is apparently getting in shape, uh, according to this. He's sharing a story with us. Can a game? Can you game your way to better apps? Uh, it's a is it's a it's an app, a smartphone app called Stealth Stealth Core Trainer, which combines a planking apparatus with smartphone app to motivate you through the pain. So. If you want to get your planking on, apparently, that is this looks like it's, it's called the Stealth Professional, and I'm looking at this thing, and it, it looks like the old like Sega Genesis motion controller. A little bit, but I guess it's app connected. Um, it is running for two hundred dollars for the personal version, three hundred dollars for the sturdier professional version, probably for some of us that are a little heavier. Uh, but uh, that's so that's his discovery through the week. Uh, Riz, you got to let us know how this is helping your abs. Picture ab pictures and send them to Bradley. That's for a different show. Uh, so um, also on here, uh, Brandon, our friend in Kansas City, has something for you, Katie. Um, it's a cool website where people who play Animal Crossing um, can buy, sell, or trade items you need and don't need. Yeah, he, he shared that with me a couple of days ago. It's really, it's neat. It's a whole, you know, rundown. It's grouped by category. Mm-hmm. So if there's something, because a lot of times you'll get in, in the Nook shops, there'll be like one very high priced item. Like there's a, it'll be hundreds of thousands of bells or there's things for a million bells. And uh, some people are looking for them for whatever reason. And if they show up in your shop, you can make some big bank off of somebody who's so, looking for them. So it's called Nookazon. Man, mm-hmm. somebody's, <laughs> somebody's going to get sued. Uh, <laughs> it's basically a Discord server, right? So mm-hmm. so how do you, so how are you able, do you, do you buy it for a person to give to or in arrange that way or? You, you'd have to arrange a visit to each other, one of the other's island. So it's. And do the trade. So it's like a it's like a digital Facebook marketplace. Yeah, that's more like that. But you gotta yeah. actually. I need to show up. Uh, your uh, well, you can mail. Actually, I take that back. If you be, well, no, you have to visit each other's island. Yeah, so before you can send each other mail. Well, you might be able to do friend codes. So yeah, I had to think that through. <laughs> do, we, do we need a designated safe place for people to visit you on your island to make these trades? Maybe. Yeah. Well, they people have the safe places whenever they have the uh, really good turnip prices, and they have the turnip <laughs> bouncers. Turnip bouncers. Oh, yeah. They'll have their friends come over to be turnip bouncers because some people will just come to the island just to trash it because people are butts. So how does it... But I always get nervous about those kinds of things. Like, what happens if you give them something and they don't give you what you were promised? I don't know. I think you're just kind of like, dang. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you can try to ask them, but I mean, there's no, like, real... There's no enforcement. No, there's no. There's, there's no, no like because I've, I've I've but I've seen like even on like eBay where like you can when when they people were buying stuff in Diablo and and other games within 
um, eBay, there was like it was like an escrow where you kind of put the money in there, nice. and then the person like the it didn't get released until the person picked up the item. Like there was a way that they kind of actually made it where there was a check and balance. Well, I think that's like, if it's, you're actually using human money, (laughs) (laughs) human money. Um, Yeah. You could, you would get away with that, but it's like, if you're just like exchanging bells or something, or if you do like the whole turn up where you're selling things and um, cause a lot of times when they're selling, if you've ever had a friend that has a really high turn up price, they'll invite people over and you'll give that friend a percentage of what you made. Cause you know, essentially they hooked you up. Mm -hmm. There's, Mm -hmm. there's, you know, all the sorts of. (laughs) So so I'm, I'm I'm, I'm waiting for that. Like, you know, we're, we're turning up that weird animal crossing, secondary black market kind of situation, aren't we? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, I bet. I can't even imagine. (laughs) Especially at this point. right? Couldn't the devs code something around that where I know in some of the other MMOs and stuff I played in the past, you know, the trade window would come up and you'd put your piece in, they'd put their piece in, and then you both have to hit OK for the actual transaction to happen. Mm-hmm. That'd be nice. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that that would make a little more sense. Well, here, here's the issue. I'm surprised this isn't like people aren't having an issue with this and, and taking any terms and conditions uh to it legally because uh, uh nintendo's going to want a piece of whatever transaction is happening if there's any money involved right <laughs> well the other thing I is mean, too, you know, set up an auction house or something yeah, you know yeah. human money <laughs> yeah i got one pair of turn up do i hear one turn up i got two over there two turn ups yeah, all right <laughs> well no the auction house is a big thing in wow you know you yeah, go right. there you post your stuff your materials or whatever and yeah you know, sell them to the highest bidder kind of thing. So, so there's 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 a there's a yeah there's there's a model for this already. So, so yeah, I I would love just the you know your 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 auction barker in the cutesy Animal Crossing voices, uh, <laughs> <laughs> calling calling things two three turnips to Miss Jagoff over there. <laughs> oh, thank uh, Darn Island. Are they okay? Have they, have they been calling you other naughty things? Um, I have to send you guys a video of um, my two. I saw two of my neighbors were chatting and they're like, I heard you use the word jag off. It's really cool. Can I use it too? Yeah, we'll get jag off trending. And I'm like, oh, stop it. (laughs) Wait, are we talking in real life or Animal Crossing? Animal Crossing. Oh, okay. (laughs) Oh, my neighbors are worse than that. (laughs) IRL neighbors. Oh, got to be sure. Got to be sure. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's great. Jag off trending. I'm like, all right, do it, guys. Yep. Go for it. (laughs) <laughs> Go for it. All right. Another one Ponder shared. Um, this is a, a, a pretty cool thing that was over on Twitter. Um, it, the, this uh, father is actually using a, a, a doorbell notification, a ring doorbell, I believe it is, to uh, communicate with his daughter. Um, he, he uses that. I guess he's, he's, he's dropping off care packages for her, and that's how she's uh, uh, being notified about what's going on. And that he's he's up, and then he's he's actually talking to her and giving her some messages too. Did I? Well, I thought Wait, there was just a video I, attached. Did I miss did a link in here? Okay, because I I was under the impression that he was using his own ring doorbell at home. Oh, she's away at college, and she had it set up yeah. on her her phone that she yeah, had no. notifications. Yeah, so he's like gotcha. coming home from work. He's walking so, in, so, and he's okay, saying so hi to the doorbell that. because okay, he knows she gets I, I just have the Twitter link in here for some reason. Um. To follow along. Oh, oh yeah, the that makes more was, sense. I, I haven't been listening that's to audio. The way that I so was... hold on. Let, let... I use. I, I know. I know different <laughs> parents that have <laughs> teenage kids in like late middle school, early high school, and that's how they actually do the notification that the kid got home. Is mm. when they when they when they walk in the front door, <laughs> they ring the doorbell. You can't sneak in. You got to <laughs> ring the doorbell. You got to have, you gotta have the check-in. And that's like in. the check-in. Yeah. Yep. That becomes your time clock in, of sorts, right? So. And I know other people that have actually started to put like as many ring doorbells as they have doors on the house. But yeah. I, well, yeah, you should, shouldn't you? Because if you could, right? Because but, if, but, but the, I mean, some people, I mean, some people will use, they, they have the cameras that are just built into a spotlight. Mm-hmm. But I found it interesting that I'm seeing more people put the doorbells up then like on a back door like on a back door yeah yeah 
But the, the yeah, the automatic motion, it's on the same system, right? You're already used to it. it and and depending on your house, you may like you gotta think when when we had the back entrance for the studio, it would make a lot of sense, right? Mm-hmm. So have it have all that covered. So I mean some people have larger, more functional houses <laughs> than some of us. So um that makes a lot of sense sometimes. All right. Hey, we got a lot of stuff going on here. Please go check out uh, here, our in-house here at Sidekick Media Services. Let us be a sidekick in your superhero project. Uh, really being the sidekick to, to a lot of people kind of just figuring out how to get things working in this world. Uh, working with uh, 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 places trying to get their streaming on, whether it be for church service, your podcast, or just shows like this and helping people connect. And we're working with a lot of people on projects for that. Our public meetings have become Facebook meetings, uh, I guess both fortunately and unfortunately, depending on who you're trying to reach here. But uh, we're helping to work a lot of people through uh, uh, all the pain points that come with our current situation over the last couple months. And we may be coming out of lockdown, but a lot of people still looking to stay at home, do their work at home, do their play at home, uh, whatever the case may be, to stay safe. It's going to be a while before we're fully out of the woods for this, and uh, and in the meantime, it can't let uh, 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 you know people become disconnected in this time. So that's a big thing we're helping out with. Please go check out everything going on at sidekickmediaservices.com, and you can see some of the toys that we have. Uh, we just got a um, a um, a uh, touchless thermometer today, so we can uh, double check everything when we go on site for. Uh, recordings and things like that and just kind of verify and uh, do what we can to try to stay safe and still uh, uh, get in the work and making some awesome things. So uh, go check out everything in the latest over at sidekickmediaservices.com. All right. Getting back into the rest of the stories here. I know you were excited. We mentioned it in passing before, uh, but uh, 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 Krause, you were, you were excited that Civilization Six is over on the Epic Game Store? Yeah, that's great. It's free. I just actually paid for it, so now I guess I own it forever. <laughs> "Quote unquote," paid for it. It was it was yeah. it was Grand Theft Auto Auto Four last week. Five. Oh wow. Five, the new one, uh, the newer one. Uh, so yeah. yeah, and they they crashed most of their servers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like you couldn't even load it for the first day. It was real bad. But um, yeah, they're they're doing some big stuff. They've been always giving away a lot of stuff over there. I just put that install on there. It's on my Mac. I can't even play half the games on the Mac. <laughs> but i have it for you know when i'm able to so um but yeah they've been getting away some crazy games over there uh, epic is really trying to come at steam right now and i don't know hopefully consumers can can win with these games um what else we got here uh Kraus, do you have another story you wanted to touch on well we got the um first manned rocket launch tomorrow hopefully um i don't know if you guys want to talk about that or not but uh Tomorrow, SpaceX is going to launch its, the first human crew into space from the U.S. since the space shuttle. So that's that's a big th- deal coming up. Hopefully, it'll go off tomorrow without a hitch. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a SpaceX Dragon. Uh, we've been mentioning this over over uh, feels like forever. I, I first heard about them doing this when I, I got to see the SpaceX launch back at the uh, beginning of March. You know when I used to be able to travel uh and uh it's a uh, it, no it's cool it's a big milestone and and also this is the first time i got to see the um the astronauts outfits outfits yeah how about Suits? that i don't know if I, i'm into those new astronaut I, would you say outfits outfits <laughs> the stylish representations there listen if you're going to go to space we when i watched that rocket there was a pair of reeboks on that rocket going to space the the style game, the, the, a Tesla went into space once. Um, right. The style game outside our atmosphere has been elevated since we used to do the shuttles, since Armageddon, since uh, br- since Bruce Willis saved us from from asteroids, uh, <laughs> whatever the c- case was, right? Uh, so um, wow, of course. But uh, I, I don't think those are our moonwalk ones. But I mean, they're just kind of our um, the Hurley. Her, uh, they're, they're done by Hurley, really? Is that they're they're like an outfit? The surfboard, the surf company? I think so. That's what I see. Or is that like a sponsor? Maybe? No, I think Hurley is one of the, the astronauts, isn't he? Oh, okay, that's a name. <laughs> the name tags on the shoulder. That's weird. 
Yeah, I, th- that's, I believe that's his name. Yeah. It's like on the part of the thing where I it's would expect Hurley Nike and to be on a football Bar- jersey. Benkenheim? I don't know how you say his name. I apologize. <laughs> Yeah, well, if, hey, if we aren't butchering people's names on this show, it's not the awesome cast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. But, but, you know, it's exciting to see that we're actually doing this again, you know, and there's the whole plan to, what is it, Back to the Moon by 2024, I believe. They mm-hmm. want to be back on the moon by then. Well, I, and honestly, I think it, it sounds like the world events may be pushing that back a little bit already. Uh, because you know, just I mean, everything's getting delayed. I'm surprised they're getting this off without a hitch. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Katie, uh, you want to touch on the new Instagram news that just popped up today? I think I think Potter might have shared this in the group earlier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Instagram's adding uh, messenger rooms uh, to, uh, for up to forty. You and forty nine of your friends. Oh, everybody, get in there! Come on, what? guys. And, you know, most of us use Instagram on our phones, so that, that'll that just be horrifying. I don't know. Like, you get to a certain number in chats, and it's got to be on my laptop where people are just teeny tiny. Or you can do the speaker view, but it's still it's just wild. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. It, it becomes a mess when everybody has an open microphone like that, right? Like, I don't, even, I, I don't even like getting six people on here <laughs> when we do these things, right? I couldn't even imagine when you don't have, you know... I didn't send technical details to you beforehand, right? And you're just going to get 50 people on. So, hey, ask any teacher on Zoom right now, right? Oh, I know. Uh, I can't imagine. But I, It's really funny be, because, like, to find any of the articles about it, it takes you to a tweet Instagram put out. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Like, this is... So we're getting our info on Twitter for Instagram. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <Not> on... <laughs> That's, That's what... the way I thought, yeah, because when you click on you the were... Twitter link. Can you record the room or is it just? I'm not sure because I, so Facebook, I haven't gotten into groups. I've been just using the Facebook um, video chat filter feature. And um, I don't think there's a way to record it. You can share your screen, but I don't think you can record it in Facebook. Yeah. It's kind of like we don't have like a recording thing with our Google meets. We use outside Mm -hmm. software to, to, in, in, uh, apparatus to, to do that, I'm, I guess. I'm, su- I'm surprised. I would think there has to be a way to record a Google Meets. No, I think this is more a social look than a, a or a right now look. Think Periscope. Think think the guy that was DJing and Michelle Obama and Oprah popped in, right? Uh, you know, like, like I think that's what we're looking for. Not you know, I want to create a thing but, that uh, stays up there. No, I, I definitely agree. But Google Meet is part of the G Suite, and it's more of the corporate meeting type thing. Mm-hmm. I understand why it's. Instagram isn't I would have thought Instagram would have let you record and kind of added portions or clips to your stories. So you're kind of thinking how Instagram live works now? Yes. Like, like, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I think this mostly is coming from their messaging division as a whole. So like, I don't know if it's got those kinds of hooks going on rather than the Yeah, because you're actually going into messenger versus yeah. like staying within the Instagram. We're, we're, and I think we, we looked in the Google Meet and recording that and Missy was setting it up for a thing I was doing with her <laughs> the one mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. And that was more of a process than we expected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of... That, it, that was surprising. <laughs> I mean, it's Google. I feel like they go like, good idea, good idea. Let's see how we can make this challenging. <laughs> and this is, you know, and, and we do remember the day where like, you know, Google Hangouts when they first came out, the killer app on it was that we could do a show like this and it records directly to YouTube. I don't know anything in Google's wheelhouse that now does that. You know, how did that, how did that killer feature go away? Right. Um, so, so, but now Zoom is going to Facebook Live and things like that. Like others are, are kind of do that, but still, it's probably still relatively a niche thing. Right. I, want, I wonder what's, but I wonder if they will do something because Google Meet, you can record you can record directly to Drive, and I'm guessing right from Drive you could post to YouTube. Yeah, but then you're not getting that full live situation like they were offering yeah. before. But still, so, so so there is a Drive component. I haven't even seen that part yet, <laughs> to be honest. So, but no, that that's helpful because I, I always like the idea that it gets recorded at Google and not over the internet pipes, you know, if there's any issues with that. I mean, that's what we do with our, our podcast. We have a we have a website that records everything locally, and then you get the best of all worlds, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, if you get, hey, if I can get to Google with a good connection, it should be the best possible video on all sides. You just, <laughs> that is the chat notification in Google, <laughs> by the way. 
Now we know what Sorry, that sounds I didn't, like. Sorry, I didn't realize it was going to ding everyone. No, that's fine. <laughs> we, we're we still learning some of the ins and outs of Google Meet. Like, And now we know that one. Um, Amanda says, just start screen recording on your device. Uh, and uh, that does add a separate step. Uh, I wonder. I was wondering if that. I was interested. I was thinking that in the back of my head, and I wonder if that works because I think there's some applications that have figured out how to black it, black it out, mm-hmm. or block the recording feature. But that was my first thought. That'd be good for a test. Uh, I've been trying to figure out how do you do. You know, when you're watching like a, a, a Jimmy Fallon or Daily Show or Bill Maher or something, they're doing the interview. There's no way they're just like pulling in like we do. Where you pull everybody in through the the, the hangout, like there's got to be some other recording feature because you can see they're rearranging it and stuff, right? So that that's and I've been wrapping my head around how how that happens to get a little bit better quality than even bringing it in through the studio like we do now. But uh, but that's also depending on the person on the other side being technically proficient to record locally. And good luck mm. sometimes. So you know, uh, yay, Jimmy Fallon can do it, but couldn't mayor of georgia do it you know <laughs> kind of thing when you bring them in so well, yeah, i wonder I if they often wonder good oh good no, go ahead, so i go. often wonder how they if they have some kind of like kit mm-hmm. that they drop ship to somebody some do some do you some... know what i mean because mm-hmm. to pull all that off to get that set up in somebody's house yeah you know, it's almost got to be like a you know, okay. There's one single plug and a cable that comes out. It says plug mm-hmm. this into your your router and plug right. this into the wall and then turn it on at 6 p.m. Yeah, or, you know what I mean or whatever. If, if, if I have the budget, I already have a plan for. If I have a budget and this person uh, uh, needs the best possible quality of thing in their home, I'd be like, send them this, send them this, send them this. Right. We walk through the setup. To make sure there's no issues with like the computer that's there, or I mean, ideally, you also send the computer, maybe. Right. Computer. That's and, what I was yeah. wondering. But yeah. there's also you have so many other factors, like like what is their internet like? What is the computer there? You know, if you you show up and the person's on DSL, there's only so much you can do. We had that issue with somebody just last uh, two weeks ago. Very technically yeah. proficient person, only had access to DSL. It actually came out pretty okay considering. Um, I, I, I feel like even at that point in time, you're you're bundling some kind of multi MiFi load yeah, balanced. Yeah, yeah. you type sent thing you sent a live U pack for a, a, two, a few grand to every person and tell them to hit this on button. That's what that's the answer. That's uh, your. Okay. That's well, I've your, even seen where you have that. That's your. I have ten thousand dollars to blow on the stream we're doing today. It's like I have. I have or I've seen where they have a, it looks like your typical cable modem, DSL modem, whatever modem with the Wi-Fi built in and a couple Ethernet ports on the back. Mm-hmm. But then it ha- actually has multiple SIM card slots in it. Uh, we are, invest- and it will go, it will go cross carrier. Yes. Ch- and ch- then it will, it will bind all of those yep. connections together yep. as well. So we- you're getting four, st- Four cell carriers simultaneously. Uh, Chilla, I got to use one of those. Ah, uh, okay. I got to use. We were doing eye pay per views straight to Twitch out of out of a uh, building in Dayton, Ohio, for Impact Wrestling. Uh, and and that's what that was. And it was like, you know, I had my AT and T phone. Like I couldn't communicate to the guy uh, in Canada because he was trying to call me, and I had no service to tell me that something wasn't wasn't working. But I had like Sprint and T Mobile were great in there for whatever reason, right? And we were we were actually investigating packs until everything came down for us to do the same thing uh locally and still still on the, you know, still on the market. Uh <laughs> cuz um but yeah, no, there's no absolutely. And there's that whole yeah, you plug in, you're on the Wi-Fi, somebody somebody unplugs your ethernet cord, you're still on the Wi-Fi. The entire internet goes out, you bounce back to the uh, you know, Verizon or something. Yeah, no. Those are those are that's how you do it. When you're at a live event and you see a video person like that look like they're with a TV network. Go look at their backpack. Like don't look in their backpack, but look, you can usually see on their <laughs> on their backpack the live view, and you see the cords and everything like that. But so I'm gonna roll that back a just little. Just go bit. up there and unzip it. And just like, a little peek. I just want to see what you're packing. I just I just want to see what you're packing in here. I like the technology. Um, <laughs> ways ways to make new friends on Awesome Cast this week. Uh, but anyways. Um, 
Speaking of of uh, making friends, we should probably hit one or two and then head out of here. Uh, any other stories you guys want to hit up? The daughters we talked about rooms. Have you tried rooms at like the Facebook rooms at all? I tried to no. I tried to start one and then it was being weird about adding people, yeah. so I just ended up doing a group chat because it was just not. So and like, I don't know if it, the games and stuff are in there too. Yeah, I, I haven't like somebody tried to throw me in like the fir- it was always the first day and then you don't get in mm-hmm. and then you don't think about it again, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Facebook hasn't been throwing it in my face like it usually does at this point so i'm kind of curious um where where that's gonna go so oh either way um let's see snapping turtle hell i think we talked about that one boston dynamics boston (laughs) this is like the three weeks in a row with a boston dynamics uh dog story (laughs) because now there's now there's video of the scary dog herding sheep in new zealand new zealand yeah i don't so wait are are sheep dogs now going out of business is that where we're at right now i'm worried about the sheep i don't think we were really paying them to begin with but wait, I, yes but what's going to happen to the sheep dogs where they, they're gonna they're gonna go to uh, uh, adoption i don't know everybody now you're gonna see like the arms of the angel commercial with sheep dogs <laughs> these poor sheep dogs were put out of business by a scary robot in new zealand that now has, <laughs> look at this thing it's just like walking around it's you know seeing one of these things that scary robot chase away wolves see yeah seeing this thing it's i think it'll chase away people it's chasing away me um it, you know there's something even more disturbing about watching this unnatural thing walking through just straight nature like i'm not a park yelling at people telling them to stay distant but just like hanging out in nature <laughs> so oh there it is there it is on the range with the with the sheep just jeez <laughs> that is so weird that is so strange hey there needs to be an episode on sean the steep on sean the sheep uh about the sh- robot sheepdog like that's got to be coming up here by the way watch that show it's enjoyable I, I i feel like this is just begging for like a modern day planet of the apes <laughs> that's the robots yeah <laughs> well it was not that a little more um oh geez pick a dystopian sci-fi movie right <laughs> I'm just looking at the way it walks and the way it like moves around. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's like maybe it's a combination of Sky Skynet uploads the animal AI into this thing, <laughs> and then it's and, and then it's a hybrid it's of just, Skynet. I think that I think have you watched Black Mirror? No. Okay. There's a there's a. I can't. I haven't watched. I, I think I've watched. I think I've watched like four or five episodes. Latest season. Find the episode that's black and white. And you'll understand okay. most of my references whenever the dog comes up. <laughs> so it's uh it's scary. It's it it'll make you look at that even more questionable. Uh, want to throw a tip out there? Uh, I have not played with this, but from all accounts, it looks good. Uh, da Vinci Resolve sixteen point two. Uh, there is a a article on um and gadget talking about it, saying it's a pretty good take on uh, uh for Premiere Pro CC. Uh, so you don't have to get into the creative cl- cr- cloud. Excuse me. Um, it is, I believe, it is a free version for Resolve. And if you get the studio version, because maybe you're hitting your head on some of the features on there, um, that's only uh, three hundred dollars versus the monthly fee of like twenty to fifty dollars, depending on where you're at with the uh, creative cr- cloud. Um, some people, a lot of people, are asking me about free or cheap. I consider three hundred dollars for a studio version of software cheap, um, but that's me. And it depends on what you're doing. Um, but uh, it, it, it looks like a fully featured um, software if you want to do a little bit more uh, with your video. Also, it takes it if you happen to be a gamer, uh, there's some stuff in here about how it takes advantage of some NVIDIA GeForce. Uh, so uh, that looks like a really good option there. So, again, a lot of people um, ask me about this. I don't use a lot of PC software for my video, unfortunately, for giving a, a full featured recommendation. But there is a free version give davinci 16 a try and uh it might it might help you guys out that are that are looking for that kind of stuff so it's a little bit more than if you're still hanging on to that movie maker i know who you are <laughs> so not you not you you leave Krauss up, alone you at least upgraded adobe rush that's not that's fine hey now i'm not using that anymore i use um <laughs> wondershare filmora there you go there you go. I, I did a project where students had to do a lot of video stuff, and you could tell 
like how many of them did stuff on the phone and there's the big banners of I you did not pay for this software across like most of the videos they submitted. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> but it's all like like it was students and it was for the you were like putting your video in comments and things like that. Um so it was kind of fun to see like all those like, oh, this is what this this is what the students are finding for software and apps and things to do these things. So um it was kind of fun to to get that little bit of um uh uh use case i guess uh, amongst the real people so uh katie you got some yes. stuff going on we talked about last week on the wrestling show how you kind of became news for a minute i, mean, I was hot news for a minute you were hot news for a minute <laughs> i think uh, I'll, I'll be hot news again <laughs> so so some people are doing some things for you yeah uh two of my uh, of our friends of the show were wrestling mayhem show well they could be our friends Jones. awesome cast friends too uh, PB Smooth and Derek Direction are uh, started a GoFundMe where, but they turned it. They're turning it into a competition. This is to benefit me, which is amazing and wonderful. And the plan is, is so they both have air bikes. And the original plan, I don't, I don't know if it's still going to happen because I don't know if they're going to survive. Uh, to be honest, is um, for every ten dollars donated, they were going to do twenty second sprints on their air bikes and then take a ten second break. Well, right now the fundraiser is at like four over four thousand dollars, so it's like an hour on the air bike for them doing sprints. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little concerned about them. I mean, they're, but they're wrestlers. I have faith they're in them. They're, they're mostly in they're mostly in shape. Okay, like PB's really in shape, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's there's some images of them on the air bikes for you guys on video, so you get the idea. But uh, yeah. So yeah. they've been trash talking each other and there's some great videos and I think there's going to be some more and I think it's going to be fun. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun to just watch them try to make it through this. <laughs> I, it, this launched, I believe, it, well, a week ago and uh, it's mm -hmm. all, it's already over $4,000 for this. Um, Which is amazing. And, holy crap. And holy crap. Yeah. Seeing, seeing, the, seeing the, the names and the numbers come in on this thing has been awesome throughout the week. So yeah and i i just i can't thank people enough for for donating is it's just a, a huge weight off my shoulders right now with just everything else going on and like having to deal with you know cancer during you know a yeah, pandemic yeah, and yeah. everything that's happening and it's just oof, it's awesome and, and greatly appreciated speaking of which you're still giving updates and that's happening over at uh pretty if you follow me on instagram kate marie pgh is where most of my updates happen because it's i like to do that and then i show you what socks and pants i'm wearing to chemo each week <laughs> potters potters in the chat room say we trust wrestlers common sense right <laughs> yeah yeah you know you know all right uh crazy kraus you're on the twitters as well yes i am with crazy kraus with the k's yep Awesome. That's the scene. I don't post. I don't post a whole lot over there, but I do look. I look at a lot of stuff. So, but if you have questions about things of a technical nature, yeah, if somebody nature, had a question, I would answer them. There you go. Yep. Also, another guy. I'm trying to get Chachi hit him up about video cameras. Chilla at Chilla on the Twitter. That's me and Chilla. Or Ch Chilla. Chachi already tweeted me, so I awesome. found the answer to my question. Fantastic. And of course, uh, and then Missy's at Rebellious Flaw. If we want to hit her up, she doesn't tweet much either. Uh, she'll so, tell you what time it is. She'll tell you what time it is, just like just like A Train. Uh, everybody tweet, "Hey, at Rebellious Flaw, what I time is it?" <laughs> Whenever you hear this, so if you get this on the podcast later in the week, I can't wait. Uh, so uh, I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Thank you guys. This has been your awesome cast. <laughs> Um, glad you guys could have fun with us here this week. Uh, thank you to uh, my Brady bunch of uh, awesome castmates here, and you have been our awesome audience. Please have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.